We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Hey, good morning, church. Great to see you all here this morning. I just wanted to, before we get into that, make sure you all know what our goal is for March Madness. We're looking for 60 new volunteers in the month of March. So if you're in this room right now and you're excited about the vision of this church, which is to see people transformed and released by the love of Jesus, and you're not currently serving in any capacity to help make that happen, as you're watching these commercials, I hope God just stirs your heart and you see something that you're like, man, I, I want to be a part of that team and, and sign up. You can go to rundlecc.org slash March Madness uh, to sign up. It's going to be awesome, all right? So make sure you do that. Hey, real fast, my name is Matt. I serve here at ACC as a lead pastor. And I can I just say that being a pastor at this church is one of the greatest gifts that God has ever given to me. Man, I, I love this place. And every time I go on a little vacation and I miss a Sunday here, I'm reminded of how much I just want to worship with my home family. Um, and God's doing so many cool things here. I mean, even think, like, I don't think there's been a Sunday this whole year where we haven't baptized someone. How cool is that? And this is uh, the first, uh, yeah, that's exciting. You know, and, and this is, by the way, the first Sunday where we don't have anyone scheduled to be baptized. So if God's stirring in your heart today, maybe in this message, and you know it's time for you to take that next step, just come find me during the last song. We'll baptize you today. Uh, in God's timing, you right? Do it, do it when you're ready and when God's telling you to do it. Uh, but hey, you know what? I, we're in the middle of this series right now where we're talking about uh, the attributes of God. We're kind of a doctrine series where we're looking at God the Father and, and how and the attributes that Scripture really kind of ascribes to Him, and we're exploring that together. And I hope you're, you're ready for this because today we're going to talk about uh, this, this word called omnipotence. And by now, hopefully, all of us in this room, we know what the omni part of that word means, right? Because we've talked about his omniscience, we've talked about his omnipresence, and now we're going to talk about his omnipotence. So omni means what? All, right? It means all. And that word potence, it comes from the uh, kind of a Greek root of potens, which means power. What we're really saying when we say that God is omnipotent, we're saying that God is all-powerful. That God is incredibly powerful. There's nothing about God that, that is, is powerless, is what we're saying. And if you really think about a claim like that, if someone were to claim to you that, that God is omnipotent, there's some incredible implications that are made in that statement. Think about this implication. If God is all power, then that means that every little bit of power that you and I have has been just given to us on loan by God. You and I don't have any power in and of ourselves. In fact, if you think about that, God doesn't actually have to take away any of our lives. He doesn't end your life. He just stops giving it. Because God is all power. Even think about this implication. If God is really all power and that there's no power or authority apart from him, then even the power that Satan has has been given to him by God. In fact, there's a quote that every time I hear it, I struggle with it. But, but listen, it says, Martin Luther said this, the devil is God's devil to carry out God's purposes. I hear that, I'm like, man, God's devil. But if you really think about it, even Satan doesn't have an ounce of authority or an ounce of power that hasn't been given to him by God. And that is true for every single one of us in this room. If God were just to stop in this moment giving his power and his authority, then we would just stop to be because God's all power. It's incredible implications when you say that God's omnipotent. And so we're going to look at that today. And, and there's a quote I want to share with you, this quote from A.W. Tozer. I think it does such a good job kind of summarizing what omnipotence means. And then we're going to look at Scripture 
and help explain this. Here's what A.W. Tozer says. It says, since God has at his command all the power in the universe, there it is, all the power in the universe, the Lord God omnipotent can do anything as easily as he can do anything else. All of his acts are done without effort. He extends no energy that must be replenished. His self-sufficiency makes it unnecessary for him to look outside of himself for a renewal of strength. All the power required to do all that he wills lies in him in undiminished fullness. Man, what a powerful quote. And at the end of the day, we don't run this church or run our, or encourage you to live your life by some other person's quotes, right? We go to God's word and say, what does God's word say about this? What can we learn about God and his omnipotence from scripture? And so I want to show you in scripture five things that kind of back that quote up. Five things that really show us the omnipotence of God. And the first one I want you to know is that God's power is limitless, that it's limitless. In other words, he never runs out. God has, doesn't have a limited source of power that eventually runs out. It, it's limitless. If you think about any really good action scene in an action movie, maybe an action you know, television show, where there's eventually, right, a good guy and a bad guy, and they're kind of pointing their guns at each other, and they're kind of shooting it out, right, and they're trying to whatever. Well, if you notice, it always kind of works out the same way. Eventually, the good guy, he's got the bad guy in his sights, right, and he pulls the trigger, and what happens? He's out of bullets. No more power. The gun's empty. You know, it kind of is pulled back and you, it's telling him like, you're out. You got to go find another weapon somewhere. But with God, listen, when we say that God is omnipotent, that his power is limitless, what we're really saying is that God has like an unlimited clip in any gun that he wants to fire. His power never, never runs out. And we've all experienced that feeling of something running out before, haven't we? Some of you are from really big families. You know at dinner time that feeling when there's only one crescent roll left? <laughs> like my wife, she makes incredible chicken divan. It's one of my favorite dishes. Anybody here heard of chicken divan before? A few of you. Well, um, I know when I walk in the house, if I smell curry, like coming from the oven, I just know it's a chicken divan night. It's going to be a really great night. Right? And, and at, sure enough, at some point, we're sitting around the dinner table together. We pull out the chicken divan. We got some white rice to go underneath it. And at some point in that meal, I know that I'm going to get the last scoop of rice because my family knows how much I love this dish, right? I'm going to get the last scoop. I'm going to get the last little bit of chicken divan. And at some point, even that's going to be amazing. But at some point, you're going to put that last little fork full of food in your mouth and you're going to look down and it's all gone. You see, chicken divan is not limitless. It runs out at some point. And see, you and I, we, we, we are limited. We, we are not able to just keep going and going and going. Any power that we have has been given to us by God. You see, there are many things I would like to do. There are all sorts of things that I would love to do, but I just don't have the power to do it. You know, the Bible says that my, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. That is true for all of us in this room. There are things that we're just not going to be able to do. Whatever God wants, on the other hand, he will certainly carry it out. If God wants to do it because his power is limitless, he's going to be able to do it. In Psalm 33, it shows one of the most powerful examples. And it says this in verse 6, The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. Man, can you imagine that kind of limitless power to be able to just speak the universe into existence? Uh, Pastor John last week was talking about kind of the, the scope and the incredible size of our universe. We give you a, a visual picture. Do you know that the star that is closest to our sun the, the closest star to us, not including the sun, the closest star is 4 trillion. Let me make sure I got that right. 24 trillion miles away. It would take light four years to reach the earth from that star. That's just the closest one. 
And scripture says that, that God has such limitless power that just with the mere breath of his mouth, the words spoken, all the stars in the known universe and even the stars outside of the known universe that we don't even know about yet were created in an instant. You see, God's power is limitless. And you and I, we just can't understand that because that's not the way things work for us. I tried to understand it. You know, the closest I could ever get to understanding just speaking something into existence is one time when my wife and I, we were kind of still in our newlywed phase. We were living in an apartment in Farmville, Virginia. And we were attending this little, cute little church. I mean, little church. We're talking about 20 families total made up this church. And one day when we decided it was time for us to move up north, we told our church family that we were moving. We had a couple days to mourn that together. And, and we, we asked them to help us move out. And we showed up at the apartment. One day I had the moving truck and I had all of our stuff in the apartment and all the church, every single person at that church showed up to help us move. And I was like, all right, so we just got to get everything from there into this truck. And then I said, I might have more room in my car. I'm going to go see if I can put some seats down. And I go over and I'm trying to like move some things around in my car. And I'm talking like 10 minutes. I turn around and every single thing in that apartment had been in that truck. It's like, what just happened? It was a bit embarrassing because I had ordered pizza for everyone. It was coming in two hours. I don't know what to say. You can stick around in my empty apartment for two hours. Can you imagine being able to speak into existence? Everything. The limitless power of our God. It's incredible. And I want you to understand this. God didn't create all this by the sweat of his brow. He didn't finish the whole creation process and think, wow, Whew, I need some deodorant. Like that's what you and I do, right? When we go and we put ourselves to some work and we take our power and our energy and we put it into it, by the end of it, we, we kind of need to go shower, right? Listen, when God f- uh, decided on the seventh day he was going to rest, it wasn't because he was tired. It was because he was modeling to us, you guys are not limitless in your power, like I am. So I need to show you what it looks like to take a day to rest and recharge. You see, our God didn't need to rest because his power is limitless. He always has it. Let me show you this again in in Jeremiah 32 verse 17. It says this, O sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth by your strong hand and your powerful arm. Read these last six verses with me, or six words with me, nice and loud. You ready? Nothing is too hard for you. In fact, if you struggle with memorizing Scripture, all right, this is the second part of this verse. Just say, you know what, I'm going to memorize today Jeremiah 32, 17b, right? And that Scripture is really easy. It's a good one to remember. Nothing is too hard for you. God, it doesn't matter what it is. If you want to do it, you can do it because your power is limitless. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing. And then how about this? In the New Testament, they're talking to Jesus and they're saying, Jesus, uh, show us uh, what's the, the problem with this rich man. And Jesus says, Jesus looked at them intently and said that humanly speaking, it's impossible for this rich man to enter heaven. But with God... Everything is possible. And by the way, I hope you understand, this verse isn't picking on rich people. If you're a poor person, hello, right? If you're like me and you're, you're, you kind of wonder where the next, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're rich or young or old or whatever. And none of those things matter. All of us, it's impossible for us to enter heaven. You want to know why? Because we got sin and junk all over us. And some of you are thinking right now, wait, what? Did the pastor just say it's impossible for me to enter heaven? It is. It's impossible on your own strength for you to get into heaven, just like it is for the rich man. But with God, oh, with God, all things are possible. With God, he's able to come up with a solution where he sends his son to die on the cross in my place, and that by putting my faith in him, uh, we, we, we substitute all of his righteousness, all of Jesus' perfection is put onto me and all my sin and junk is put onto Jesus on the cross. 
With God, all things are possible. Listen, by my own strength, it is impossible for Matt to enter heaven. But with God, all things are possible. You know what I notice sometimes when we're praying for our lost friends and family? What we do is we think of that family member, that friend, we're like, man, they're just on the cusp of giving their life to Jesus. And we pray for them. Like, ah, oh, I just know just one more invite to Easter Sunday, one more whatever, one more, a few more prayers, and within the month, they're going to be loving Jesus like I do. And we pray for that, and we pray for them. But what happens is we have other people that we know of, that they're so far from the church, they're so far from loving Jesus, they hate everything that you stand for. And we just kind of write them off as lost causes. But do you know that if all things are possible to God, there is no one outside of the saving grace of God. There's no one that God is incapable of saving. There's no one that it's too hard for God to save. No one is too difficult to be saved by God. So as you pray for others, certainly pray for the ones that you're thinking, oh, they'll probably never love Jesus. Can you imagine, it? just think about this, if you really understand that God's power is limitless, how that would change your prayer life? If you knew that every petition you lift up to God, that he is far more than capable of accomplishing it if he wills. Think about how that would change the way you pray. How amazing would our prayer lives be? So think about that. That's the first thing. God's power is limitless. Here's the second thing I want you to know about God's power is God's power is invincible. That's a word that we don't use very often. We don't usually walk around and be like, invincible this, invincible that. But I remember, I had a friend who knew this word really well. His name was David Horn. And when we were in elementary school and young kids, maybe even pre-elementary school, like, like little boys would do, we'd get together with our friends and we would make every game somehow would end up someone would have guns, right? Yeah, we'd take a stick, we'd take our sandwich and chew it into a gun, right? We, it didn't matter. We'd figure out a way to turn this into a good guys and bad guys. We'd run around shooting at each other with something, right? Well, one thing that was always frustrating about my friend David is as soon as you were playing this game, you established the rules, you find David, you shoot David, David's supposed to fall dead, he's supposed to be out, but he would immediately declare, I am Robocop. <laughs> like, what? He's like, I'm invincible. I think that Robocop, I, I don't remember, but I think a silver bullet or some special way you could get Robocop, but we didn't know what that was, and David would just walk around declaring his invincibility and just shoot whoever we wanted, and you could shoot him, and it wouldn't matter because he declared himself invincible. Man, I eventually declared myself Robocop 2.0. <laughs> I don't know. Here's what I know. Here's what I know is that God has never been defeated and can never be defeated because his power is invincible. No one can take his power from him. Remember, the power that you and I have has been granted to us. It's been graciously given to us by God. We didn't take it from him. Nobody can take God's power from him. He gives it as he wills, but no one can take it from him. His power is invincible. Let's see uh, some scripture that backs us up. In Job chapter 42, verse 2, it says this. I know, God, that you can do anything. And here's the next part. Remember, that's the first part, the limitless. But, and no one can stop you. Who can stop God? No one. God can do whatever it is that he wants to do. And not a single one of us in this room, however conniving we are, however secretive we are, however smart we are, none of us is going to be able to stop him from accomplishing his will. He's invincible. How about this? Psalm 33, verse 10 says, The Lord frustrates the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes. But the Lord's plans stand firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. You know what this is really saying is if God wants to do something, he's going to do it. If you want to stop him, you can't. Whatever God wants to do, he's going to do. His power is invincible. 
And then Isaiah asks this rhetorical question, Isaiah 14. It says, the Lord of heaven's armies has spoken. Who can change his plans? Who, or when his hand is raised, who can stop him? I hope you understand this, this is a rhetorical question. In other words, when we say, who can stop God's plans, I hope none of you in this room are considering raising your hand today. <laughs> because not a single one of us can do it. No one. Because God's power is invincible. Remember back in like PE class or recess when you're trying to divide a group of people into two teams? Right, everyone stand against the wall. Unless you were doing like team captains, usually the way a PE teacher would do it is put you up against the wall and they would say, one, two, one, two. And everyone's supposed to remember where they're supposed to go. Well, I don't know about you, but I, this is what I would do. I'd look down at where my friend was or where I knew uh, this kid named Brent. He would always win. He was very athletic. I'd figure out where he was and I'd work myself in the right spot in line. So I was gonna be on his team. I'm telling you what, if this is happening and, and God is down there in the line, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to be on God's team because his team is never lost, ever. I can get excited about the Eagles going to the Super Bowl. God's team is never lost. I want to be on that team. I hope you want to be on that team. God's power is invincible. He cannot be defeated. Here's a third thing that we need to know about God's omnipotence. God's power does not diminish. God's power does not diminish. One thing I've noticed as I get older, the older I get, the more sounds I make when I stand up and sit down. I don't know where they come from. You know, so now I just sit down and <clears throat> like, why, why am I making sounds when I sit down these days? I stand up, Ugh. you know, like, what's going on? But see, for each of us, the, the older we get, the, our bodies, they just diminish. They, they fall apart. They, they don't become stronger over time. Maybe when you're little, right, they, they, they kind of grow in strength. But at the end of the day, all of our bodies are designed, we, we diminish. When we come home from a long day's work, Right, I come home and I sit down and I just, I'm just e exhausted because all of the energy that I started the day with has been used up. And now I need, because I, am not, uh, I do not have God's undiminishing power, my power diminishes. It ener my energy runs out. By the end of the day, I need to lay down and I need to rest. I need to recharge, just like everyone else. But see, God's power doesn't diminish this is how Isaiah shows it in, in verse, uh, chapter 40, verse 28. It says this, Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and his strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired. The young men will fall in exhaustion, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength and they will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. In other words, I love this. You and I, our power is diminishing. It runs out. But because God's power does not, he can fill us. His Holy Spirit lives in us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and I who are followers of Jesus. If you've given your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And through that power that God grants to you, if he wills to give you power, you can, you can soar on the wind like the wings of an eagle. Because that's how God's power in us can, can, he can use us, but you and I, left to our own strength, man, it runs out. It does. Psalm 102 says this, long ago you laid the foundations of the earth and you made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and discard them. But you are always the same, and you will live forever. 
What a powerful truth about God's power being undiminishing. It never runs out. Here's the fourth thing about God's power. God's power is unfathomable. In a way, what God's word says about God's power is it's kind of a pointless attempt to preach a a sermon on the power of God. Because what I'm trying to do is help you understand something that we can't really wrap our heads around. We can try to understand, we can try to understand what, uh, you know, a trillion miles away, you know, multiple trillions of miles away, but our heads really, like, I don't know what that means. We can't fathom it. We can try to get a visual picture. We can say, my God can do anything. But at the end of the day, his power is just so unfathomable. One of these, these verses, well, let me ask you a question. What do you have if you have four cantaloupes in one hand and three cantaloupes in the other? What do you have? No, really big hands <laughs> is the answer. Really big hands. Here, here's here's, here's the, the point of that joke. We can't grasp it. You can't grasp onto four cantaloupes with a hand. But we don't have that, that kind of hand. But we can't grasp the incredible power of God. It's just hard for our, it's impossible for our heads to wrap around it. But, but we recognize this unfathomableness in Ephesians 3. And here's what it says in verse 20. It's a very well-known verse. I put it in the NIV. It says this, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more, say that with me, immeasurably more, than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Whose power is at work within us? It's his power at work within us. To him be the glory. Why should he get the glory? Because it's his power doing the work in you. He's using you to do his work for his glory. We shouldn't get any credit for it. And it says, in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You see, this verse says that we can, we can come up with this incredible vision for our life, We can come up with this incredible vision for our children, for our marriage. We can come up with this incredible vision for this church. We can, uh, it says, right, that at the end of the day, all that we can ask or imagine, imagining, that's like the concept of having a vision. I imagine that this church could look like this, or that my marriage could look like this, or that this could, whatever. We can imagine things, but God's word says that he's capable of doing immeasurably more than we can even fathom up in our imagination. You see, it's unfathomable, the power of God. Immeasurably more. Here's the fifth thing. And this one, I think, is kind of interesting. It's that God's power is self-consistent. God's power is self-consistent. And here's what I mean by that. God's Power only works in conjunction with all of his other attributes. We know that God is love. And therefore, his power only works in conjunction with the fact that he is a loving God. All his power works in conjunction with his love. We know that God is wise. That all, he's all-knowing, right? God's power only works in perfect consistency with his wisdom. God's power only works in consistency with his grace and with his mercy. These are attributes of God that he's, you know, we have verses in scripture that say, we just read one, that for God all things are possible. You know, there's actually scripture that actually starts with, for, for God, this thing is impossible. I'm like, wait, what? How could scripture say that certain things are impossible for God? You just said that all things are possible for God. I'll give you one of those verses. I'll put a little piece of it. Hebrews 6.18 says, It is impossible for God to lie. It's impossible. But, But God can do anything he wants, right? Why can't God lie? Because it's inconsistent with his character. God can't tell a lie because it's not who God is. God doesn't lie. God cannot die, by the way. 
It's inconsistent with his character. He can't just will himself to, to stop being. Thank goodness for all of us. Because it would be inconsistent with his character. You see, there are things that God cannot do, and those would be things that God would not do because of who God is. You see, God's power works in perfect harmony with his sovereign will. If God wants something to happen, it's going to happen, and that thing that's going to happen is going to be in perfect harmony with what's good and right and perfect, because that's who our God is. So here's, here's a question that we, we always kind of wrap up our, our messages with here. It's a question I want you to ask God, which is, what, what am I supposed to do with this information? If I truly believe that God is omnipotent, if I truly believe that God is all-powerful, that every little bit of power I have has been given to me from God, like how should that change the way I live my life? How should that change the way I interact with other people? How should that change the way I pray? How should that change the way I work? Some of us are familiar with the word impotent. Right? Impotent, when we think of the word impotent, we think of it in kind of a, a sexual connotation, right? But you know that word potent, impotent, and omnipotent, those are the same words. Impotent essentially means that you don't have the strength, you don't have the power to be able to accomplish the task in front of you. And the truth is that when, when we ask God, what should I do with this? We got to recognize that all of us, we're human beings, we're broken, we're weak, we run out of power. The truth is that in many areas of all of our lives, we're impotent. But guess what? God is omnipotent. God is omnipotent. You might be weak, but God is strong. You might be able to die, but God can't. You might be unable to accomplish something. God can. You're, omnip you're, you're impotent. God is omnipotent. The way it's, it's worded uh, is this. In Philippians 4.13, it says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. You, I, I got to be real careful here because I don't want to just say you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Some of you in this room, you've made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And when you made that decision, one of the incredible gifts that you received was God actually sent, uh, because he sent his son and you put your faith in him, God sends his Holy Spirit to actually live inside of you. Again, the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you if, if you made a decision to put your faith and trust in Jesus. And if you're in that category, if you're a brother or sister in Christ today, you have that power inside of you. Anything God wants to do through you, he can do it. If God wants to do it and is, uh, is planning to do it, he's going to do it. There's nothing you can really do to stop him. Now, he certainly, in his goodness and in his mercy and in his love, he gives you a lot of freedom to decide uh, uh, what you're going to do with the power that he's given to you. But at the end of the day, if God wills something to happen, it will happen. You have the power and the strength within you through the Holy Spirit. Now, some of us in this room, maybe you haven't made a decision to invite Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And right now, what you recognize is day after day, you're trying, you're, you're working hard, and at the end of the day, you realize you're just incredibly, like, you just don't, you're, you're all out, and you're wondering, like, why? Why is it so tiring? Why is it so exhausting? Why is this life just so draining? It's because you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. You've never taken for a moment and said, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I need your substitutionary atonement. I need, I need what you can only accomplish for me. I, I, I want to accept that. And I want the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want the gifting of the Holy Spirit to be able to empower me to accomplish your purposes. If that's you, I, I, I hope that today would be the day that that stops. That today would be the day where you decide, today, I want to give my life to Jesus. And I want his Holy Spirit I want the, the Holy Spirit of God to empower me and, and dwell me and live inside of me. If that's you today, by the way, when we sing this last song, you can just come see me. I'll stand right down here. 
Just say, listen, I, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'll, I'll talk to you about that. We can pray together. But here, here's the thing. I want you to know this isn't the prosperity gospel. I'm not just saying that whatever you want, just name it and claim it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying ultimately that we can do God's work, God's way for God's glory. Anything God wants to do, what ultimately we need to understand is we can exchange our weakness for his strength. And here's what I want to invite you to do this morning. If you're a believer and you've, you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, or you're not, I want you to know that you all have option today to, to, to claim and grab onto this truth is that you can exchange your weakness for God's omnipotent strength today. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your incredible power. Thank you so much that you sent your son to this earth to die on the cross for us because you recognize that it's impossible for us to earn our way to heaven. The only way any single one of us will ever spend a moment in your presence is through the incredible uh, incredible gift you gave us in your son. You see, it's impossible for us to earn our way there, but it is incredibly possible for you to create a solution and a path forward for us. And that's through Jesus. God, so I pray for anyone in this room right now that has never made a decision to follow you, that today would be the day they change that. And they say, you know what? I want the power of God. I want the, the gift of God. I want the gift of his son. I want all that. I want to just cling to it and, and run with it. I want my life to have a purpose that God has given to it that they would make that decision this morning. And God, for all of us, I pray that you would help us and remind us that we can exchange our weakness for your strength. That those that we know that seem far from you, God, we can pray for them because there's no one that you're incapable of saving. God, help us to pray in a way that we recognize that as we pray, you can do anything you want. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this, you belong at ACC.